All right, everybody, we'll be starting in about one minute. Once again, we'll be starting in about one minute. All right, welcome everybody. This is our one of our first Zoho Mail webinars and uh, welcome to today's session. Um, uh, my name is Warren and I know your control panel says that uh, uh, my name is Raju and uh, that's just the uh, account holder for our GoToWebinar account. But um, uh, my name is Warren, even though it says Raju. Uh, I'm the evangelist for uh, Zoho here and I'm um, the uh, resident DJ here, I guess, in the California office. And we're located in Northern California here, uh, a smidge east of San Francisco in Pleasanton. So if you're ever uh, around the Bay Area and you'd like to stop by and visit us at Zoho, that would be uh, fantastic. And uh, you get to meet the team and check out our uh, headquarters here uh, with about 43 thousand square feet of event space and uh, we hold all of our conferences here and uh, do a lot of training and um, uh, it's the mothership and in case you were wondering what our office looks like uh, looks like here uh, let me just show you really quick let's see uh, we uh, this is our annual sales and marketing conference uh, for the sales and uh, marketing apps. And this is what our office looks like uh, here. Uh, again, it's really uh, dedicated for having a great event space because um, everyone's been to conferences and uh, hotels and convention centers generally have uh, poor internet and poor food. And uh, we have permanently fixed those two problems forever. So. Uh, that's our office here, and uh, we'd love to welcome you. We have a couple events coming up, actually. Let me just uh, do a little brief advertisement. So here we have, uh, since we have so many different apps uh, besides just Soho Mail, uh, we have uh, immediately coming up our finance and HR uh, conference coming up next week. And that's going to talk about our HR apps and finance apps. That's on Thursday and Friday. In February, we'll be talking about Zoho Creator, where you can build your own database app. And uh, in uh, next summer, muted. Oh, awesome muted. Apps. Whoops, sorry about that. I think I just muted myself. Uh, um, let's see. Sorry about that. So, uh, yes, we, in August, we have Productivity and Collaboration, where we talk about Zoho Mail, Zoho Docs, and Sales and Marketing is in uh, the early part of summer. All right, so that's a little uh, advertisement about our events. And if you're tuning in from uh, uh, India, we have a upcoming event happening in November there for uh, Zoholics as well. And this is actually more of a tech summit and uh, if you're around in India, uh, we'd love to uh, meet you there. All right, so back to our uh, webinar here. Uh, I have a quick poll, and I would love to get everyone's opinion really quick. And uh, first off, I would love to find out where is everyone from? So um, uh, you should see a little poll pop up on your screen. And looks like we have six, uh, most people are voting. And uh, yeah, just want to get a sense of where everyone's tuning in from. Okay, perfect. Looks like most folks are, are uh, tuning in from uh, North America. And uh, in that case, uh, thank you so much for joining us at this late hour. Uh, we goofed up a little bit on the offering of the actual time slot. So we did 9 a.m. and 9 p.m. today. So 
uh, in the future, we'll make sure this is uh, uh, optimized in a much uh, more ideal fashion for everybody. So sorry about that goof up in case you were wondering what happened. And I have, just have uh, one more question for everybody. And uh, this is the last poll. And yep, so here we just want to see um, how far people have gone with Zoho Mail. So uh, here's our three options. We would like to know if you have more than 25 users, if you're currently using it, or if you have less than 25 users, or if you're just exploring Zoho Mail as an option. Okay, perfect. So it looks like uh, about 70% of you have less than 25 users. And about 20% of you are uh, exploring Zoho Mail as an option. Okay, perfect. All right, thank you so much, everybody. Let me close that poll. All right, perfect. Thank you. Okay, great. So, uh, so here's our agenda for today's webinar. Uh, again, we'll keep it uh, on time. Make sure we end in uh, before 10 o'clock p.m. Pacific time. And we're going to talk really briefly about where Zoho came from so you have a little background of uh, what we do. We'll talk about what to do with your domains, whether you're buying them or you're, or if you bought it somewhere else, um, what to do with that. We'll talk about creating email aliases, how to set up your time zone and language preferences. We'll talk about security in terms of two-factor two, two um, authentication and app-specific passwords. We'll talk about configuring POP, IMAP, and ActiveSync. And we'll talk about uh, our deployment outside of just uh, the web. So we'll look at uh, Zoho Mail for iOS and Android. We'll talk brief, briefly about our pricing and also our free plan. And we'll have an extensive demo where, where we're going to run through all of this. And we'll have time for Q&A briefly at the end as well. And if you have any questions during the presentation or during the demo, please feel free to ask away in our question box on your GoToWebinar panel. Uh, my colleagues here, uh, Ramya, Raven, and Hari, are taking care of questions during the presentation and a demonstration. So. We're happy to um, take care of that uh, as we're going through. And um, with that, let's, uh, let's jump into our presentation. And um, in case you're wondering what this is, uh, this is Zoho Show, and this is what we use to make uh, presentations. We have a full free online office suite, and uh, it's uh, pretty awesome. If you, if you use PowerPoint for many years, uh, this is an awesome free version. So. Uh, you don't have to worry about buying Microsoft Office anymore, and uh, our entire Office suite is permanently free and available on the cloud. So if you want to check that out, uh, feel free. And with that, uh, let's go to one of our first slides here. And um, uh, yes, Zoho has been around for over 17 years, and we've been headquartered in California for the majority of that. Uh, we actually started out of a uh, the, the trunk of a Honda Civic in New Jersey way back in the day. And since then, we've, cut, we've grown a, a big ways and we have over 10 million users now for a variety of apps, including Zoho Mail. And that translates to about 300,000 new users every single month. And our office suite looks like, um, oh, I'm jumping ahead a little bit, uh, pardon me. This is our partner ecosystem. We have over a thousand resellers located strategically all over the world and they have specialties with a variety of apps and uh, they provide localized help and implementation. So no matter where you're tuning in from, we have boots on the ground to help you get rocking and rolling with Zoho. And here is our office, oh, sorry, is our full suite. So we've really built Zoho as a business suite and we wanna be the one-stop shop to take care of all your business needs. So that way you don't have to worry about your business and your internet connection. And uh, uh, that way we'll take care of everything. So obviously we're talking about email, which is extremely foundational and extremely basic for any organization, whether you're for-profit or non-profit, everyone needs email. And then after that, we have a site builder. Um, uh, we can uh, take care of your office suite needs. We have a document management uh, uh, apps here. We have project management, sales, sales and pipeline tracking, marketing, customer support, accounting, HR, um, password management here, um, site monitoring, uh, business intelligence tools with Zoho reports. And if we don't have the app in-house, we have a, data build, a database app builder with Zoho Creator where you can build the apps that, 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 that you need. So 
we really have tried to cover the whole gamut of what you need. And all of these products have a free edition because we really believe in the freemium business model. So we want to offer you uh, a free edition to play with. And if you like it, you can um, upgrade for more functionality or just use that. And uh, especially with email, we, we're giving away up to 25 free inboxes. So I uh, will talk about more about that uh, towards the end, but that's a quick snapshot of what all of Zoho does. So uh, we do a lot more than just email. All right, so this is our actual growth and uh, we've been growing extremely rapidly and we're about a quarter of the monthly volume of Google. So uh, specifically for Gmail, uh, we are rapidly catching up. So uh, stay tuned. All right, so now let's get into some meat and potatoes. And uh, uh, yeah, so here we go. We'll show this extensively in our demo. Uh, and first off, you can always, uh, get, I mean, getting a domain is really important in terms of branding and having a solid presence. So if you already own a domain, we can add it to Zoho Mail and we'll show you how to do that and verify um, that via your DNS manager. And if not, you can always buy a domain and that's pretty much, that's pretty straightforward. And you know, it could be uh, uh, something basic like um, bobsautoshop.com or what have you. So totally up to you. Uh, and here is the general flow of the email setup process. So once you get your domain, we're going to add um, uh, users to run off that. And then we have to just update our MX records. And we'll take care of email migration. All right. And in case, you're, in case I'm going really fast, which I am, uh, there's a lot of content to get through. Uh, this presentation itself will be shared with you. This whole recording will be shared with you as well. And uh, we'll also send the user guide so you can uh, review that at, a, uh, at, a, at the correct pace instead of uh, 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 trying to remember all of this at breakneck speed here. All right, so next we'll be talking about creating email aliases. All right, so in case you don't know what an alias is, it's just a nickname for your email address. And you can create any number of email aliases. And that's usually in the context of Maybe you have multiple departments, you have multiple domains, and you want a little bit of separation via your uh, email. And uh, if you're just a single person operation, multiple e email aliases make you look much bigger than you are, which is pretty handy. So uh, that's a, a nice, uh, important feature there. Uh, so setting up an email alias is very straightforward. We're gonna go into control panel, go under user details, and you can add new users, select a new user, and play with those different options under mail accounts and go from there. All right, so this is what it looks like. And uh, here we see that uh, there's outgoing email, incoming email, active sync is set up, spam check is set up, IMAP access is set up, and we can see uh, how much data is being used in their um, uh, inbox. And uh, we can, uh, tweak what address shows up here as well. And here we have the different aliases. And yeah, so this is just a quick uh, uh, a quick view of what, what, of what we're gonna be seeing soon. Next, we'll look at time zone and language preferences. And uh, it's important to note that uh, the default settings, once you add new users, will be uh, configured to match that, uh, will be configured to match the settings of the super administrator. So if you're located in Copenhagen and your language is set in Danish, uh, everyone else will be in Danish and uh, set to that time zone, even if they're located uh, in Tokyo or something. So just FYI. So to actually play with this, just we'll just go to settings, we'll go to the general tab, and we'll select the correct time zone uh, and, and uh, date format that we like. And that's pretty straightforward. And in case you are ultra fabulous and you are like, hey, I'm on the jet most of the time. I don't really have a place to call home. What do I do in that case? Well, we don't quite have a auto detect feature yet to reset time zones uh, based on where you are. Uh, that might be coming in the far off future. But what you can do is just manually set this each time you go to a different location. 
and that will make sure your calendar is uh, moving correctly with you. So uh, a bit of a pain in the butt, but I uh, just want to at least, at least make sure that you know that is the current workaround. And uh, so here's what it actually looks like. And um, depending where you are in the world as well, uh, everyone has a certain preference for date format. And Americans, myself included, uh, are big fans of having the month first and then the day and then the year. And the rest of the world looks at us like we're crazy, especially with us obsessed with the imperial, system, the imperial, uh, metri the imperial measuring system as well. So, uh, okay, yes, moving on. Uh, language, uh, again, uh, it's also in a general tab and uh, you can just select your options. Uh, all the popular languages are included there. Um, so, yep, English, Chinese, French, Deutsch, Italiano, etc., etc. So, uh, choose what you would like, and that's pretty much it for languages. Uh, a big shout out to all the English speakers out there. America just won the World Series of Baseball again last night, and that's why America is number one. Uh, uh, so, yes, we can also play with our display name, and you can uh, tweak those settings under the mail tab, and you can personalize the send mail as, and we'll show that in our demonstration. And it's nice to be able to customize your display name so it says uh, the correct name, uh, and maybe the maybe it's a department, you can specify that as well. And again, if you're just joining on to our webinars, I see we have a couple new, new guests. Um, this recording will be, th this webinar is being recorded and will be distributed as well with the notes and presentation. And, uh, if you're staring at your uh, go-to webinar panel and it says Raju's talking, but my name's Warren, um, you know, I just realized that my name's really Warren and Raju's just the account holder. But yes, okay. So this is where we actually will change the display name, and we can customize this. So uh, it says, for example, Zoho Sales for this email alias uh, versus Ramya for this this uh, email alias here. Okay, so that's a cool thing to tweak. And besides that, we also have email policies and group settings. So uh, let's look at group settings first. So groups could be something like um, uh, payroll at zillum.com or sales at zillum.com where there's multiple folks that will share this email alias. So when you email payroll at zillum.com, it's going to go to a couple different folks that are attached to that group. So that's pretty helpful. And uh, specifically with email policies, this is a form of restrictions on your inbox. And uh, um, I think there's a handful of people that are from uh, Europe, the Middle East, or Africa, and hopefully no one's from Nigeria. In case you are, our apologies. Uh, we've had some cases of where um, private individuals at companies there have abused uh, corporate email uh, inboxes and have used that to spam people or solicit funds on Craigslist, all kinds of weird things. So uh, um, to prevent that, we have some nice email policies that will help you uh, regulate uh, email. All right, so some of those restrictions can include limiting the number of emails sent per day. It can limit the size of attachments and whether you can send or receive emails. You can create multiple email policies and you can apply them organizationally or with specific people. Uh, we find this a frequent requirement for financial and banking institutions that uh, are extremely tight-lipped about what they do and what they say. So for example, um, the majority of institutions keep all their emails internal and they're just emailing uh, staff inside the company and very few people have actual clearance to make public statements and public emails to the rest of the world. Um, and uh, another use would be maybe your organization has uh, full-time staff and contractors, and you don't quite trust that shady contractor to uh, email the external world. So maybe you can restrict their email policy until they've proven themselves to you. So that's just a couple examples there. And so this is what it looks like. So we can create that email policy and uh, just turn on and off settings. And uh, we can also restrict IPs. Okay, 
And uh, so here's what it looks like for um, policy applied. Notice we have two of them here. And yep. And then here's uh, what groups would look like. Uh, going back to uh, group management. So groups, again, is where uh, several people are assigned group-wise to a particular male alias. So, for example, payroll will probably go to a couple HR-related folks. And there's a couple different access levels. And we're going to explain that right here. So we have four access levels for managing groups. Uh, so first off is everyone. Um, the, the everyone category, and this is where everyone can send email. So anyone can email this uh, this uh, email, and it'll go to all the recipients. There's no uh, moderation or anything. So that's the most basic level. Next, we have uh, or, uh, organization members, where only or, or organization members can email uh, that address. So that's more ideal for like an internal discussion kind of thing. So. If you're in a financial firm, this is probably your default um, email policy, or I'm sorry, your, your grouping. And next we have group members, which is uh, it's private to the group. Only the group can email itself. And it's a, basically a closed discussion. It's, uh, it's a very clicky uh, group access level here. And next we have uh, moderators only, which basically, for example, in California here, we have about a dozen folks in the office, and uh, there's a moderator that that moderates all the ingoing, uh, all the incoming emails. And that way, uh, if someone's obsessed with um, uh, some joke or chain letter or some YouTube video, uh, the moderator can choose not to pass it on to everyone else and uh, waste time. So that's one example. And next, we're going to go into migration. Uh, so you will need your IMAP and POP server setting details. And uh, uh, we'll provide you what ours are. And uh, you probably need to know where you're coming from and other, other credentials that might be necessary. And uh, whoops, sorry, this slide's out of order. Uh, this should, should have been before migration, but uh, this is IP restrictions. So uh, back in 2012, there was a Verizon developer that um, was not under IP restrictions. And what he did was he outsourced his job. And he sent this to a software firm in China and paid him about 50 grand a year to do his job for him. And um, he would just surf uh, Reddit all day, watch cat videos, Facebook stuff, link, uh, do, do LinkedIn all day, and go home. And... Um, he did this for not just his job at Verizon, but a couple other local companies as well. And uh, the ultimate smoking gun was uh, 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 their, 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 uh, the IT department got a little confused on why uh, the VPN kept uh, showing up with uh, uh, an external proxy and the VPN traffic was being directed to China and back. And they also found his uh, inbox was full of PDFs, which were just invoices for uh, the bills that he would be paying for the software team uh, in China. So uh, he also FedExed his, uh, R his RSA token so they could authenticate on the other side as well. So uh, if you want to prevent that sort of thing, IP restrictions are really helpful. So, um, yep, it really happened. All right. Next, we're going to talk about TFA and app-specific passwords. So in case you've never heard of TFA, it just stands for two-factor authentication. And you've actually been using TFA for a long time and probably never realized it. So um, again, this is just another way to manage security and privacy. And uh, so there's TFA, password policies, uh, IP restrictions, and you can also uh, provide or restrict POP, IMAP, and ActiveSync. So the easiest example of how to explain uh, how TFA works is think of your ATM card and your PIN at the automatic teller machine. What happens is uh, if, you, if, if a thief steals your ATM card, that card isn't particularly useful. They still need your PIN. So the PIN is the secure code that authenticates the ATM card. So uh, if I really want to steal... Uh, your, your the funds out of your checking account or your savings account. I need your check card, and I have to beat the pin out of you. So, 
uh, that's uh, kind of like the check and balance system there. So in terms of your inbox, what we can do is we not only have your username and password that's needed to open it, you need a secure code that is generated through an SMS message, the text, a voice call, or a mobile app. And then you enter it into uh, your account and then you can actually access it. So we highly recommend you to use Google Authenticator, particularly if you're traveling frequently or you don't always have um, a, cell a cellular connection, maybe due to where you're working, where you're working or where you're living. Uh, if you travel frequently, um, you definitely need uh, something like Google Authenticator that can give you that secure code even without online or cellular access. And uh, for an organization, you can easily turn this on uh, or, uh, organization wide with just one mouse cl click. And that's under the control panel, dashboard, and then just under TFA. Perfect. And you can also apply this to specific users. And you just go to the control panel under user details, you can select any user and turn on or off. And next we also have app specific passwords. So first you have to turn on TFA and then you can turn on app specific passwords. So these are unique passwords that are particularly tailored to certain applications. So this gives you an additional layer of security. So this is particularly needed when you're setting up uh, an external pop or IMAP or active sync, uh, maybe on your phone or something else. Uh, so this is also available. And to set this up, it's very straightforward. You first have to set up TFA and then set up uh, your app specific password. Okay, so this is what it looks like. And we'll show this again in our demo, of course. Um, we can turn on TFA. It'll specify if you want this as a text message or a voice call. Again, we highly recommend Google Authenticator here. Um, and then as, as a best practice, the ultimate one-two combo punch here is use Google Authenticator, but also have backup verification codes. So great. Um, if you uh, use the Google Authenticator, um, sometimes your phone might, 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 might run out of charge or something and you can't recharge your, your phone battery, then the backup codes are extremely handy. So again, if this doesn't really make sense and why TFA is important, uh, for your email, uh, it's sort of like this. So if I want access to your inbox, I need to get your uh, your user ID and your password, and I have to steal your phone. That's really what's what's coming down to. So uh, that's that that that's how complicated it is. And if you have um, um, uh, Google Authenticator and your phone's out of battery, like I'm completely dead out of the water. So uh, this is pretty secure, relatively. Okay, so this is what that page looks like for setting it up. Uh, here is actually the actual creation of the app-specific password. You can specify the device or the app name right here, uh, punch in the password, and that's pretty much it. All right, next we're gonna look at configuring POP, IMAP, and ActiveSync. And again, I wanna apologize for going so fast. Uh, again, this recording will be distributed along with the presentation and our user guide. All right, so uh, we're gonna look into settings. We're gonna go to the mail tab. We're gonna set up email forwarding, pop and IMAP, and just uh, turn it on and click save. Pretty straightforward. And here's the actual server settings for both incoming and outgoing. And uh, again, uh, please note here, if you have TFA turned on, you will need an app specific password. Uh, on the uh, flip side with IMAP, uh, very similarly, it's in the same section. And here are your incoming and outgoing server settings. And again, this will be sent to you so you don't have to jot this down right now. Okay, perfect. All right, and in terms of IMAP access, you can actually select which folders you want to have IMAP as well. So you can select exactly uh, what it is and it'll look something like this. And in our demo, you'll see which is just check or uncheck this. So pretty, pretty easy. All right. And again, I see a bunch of folks joining in to our presentation. Uh, welcome. Uh, this presentation and the recording will be sent to you so you can review this at your leisure. 
And if you have any questions, please feel free to please feel free to ask away in our question box, and our team will be happy to answer questions during this presentation and the demo. All right. So if you use the Exchange server and ActiveSync, uh, it's going to sync your contacts, your calendar, and your emails. And you have to only have to remember one single configuration, which is msync.zoho.com, and it's pretty easy. So uh, not too complicated. Uh, once you have to set up uh, uh, for your smartphone, uh, contacts will autofill. Uh, your calendar will generate a reminder on your mobile if the sync's set up, and uh, life will be good. All right, next we have native Zoho mail apps, which are pretty awesome and brand spanking new. They're available both uh, for iOS and Android. Uh, we have an awesome video, which I would love to share with you, but um, I just realized uh, I don't have my mic input plugged in, so you can't even hear this. So uh, if you want to go to our Zoho channel or just Google Zoho Mail, uh, on, uh, you can just find us and uh, go to our channel. And it's uh, an awesome little video if you want to just take a glance of what Zoho Mail looks like on your smartphone. It's pretty awesome. Um, and we have other videos as well on our Zoho channel if you want to check that out. Yep, so that's at your leisure. Um, if you like Zoho Survey, uh, I just did this a while ago, so you can check that out too. Cool beans. Uh, moving on, this is what it actually looks like. And uh, this is a little bit hard to see. Let's get our, to show you a cool feature of Zoho Show, which is our presentation software here. We're gonna magnify the bottom icons. Bam. Look at those awesome vector graphics. All right. So we have our emails uh, tab here, an integrated calendar, contacts, files, which consist of all your attachments and more, and your settings. So it's really easy to navigate. So left-handed, right-handed, uh, iPhone 6 or iPhone 6 Plus, um, you, can, you can make this work with your thumb. Awesome. All right, and now we're gonna jump into the demo. And uh, let's get into our uh, let's get into our accounts. Okay. All right. So uh, our demo is uh, in real time and uh, not 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 too slick, not too fancy. I will be doing every single step, logging into GoDaddy and everything else and real-time speed, and um, you'll see me struggle, and you'll know that this is real. Okay, awesome. All right, so this is what Zoho Mail looks like, if you've never seen it before. We actually have a new UI that we're uh, testing out internally, and this is what it looks like. So I'll just give you a quick snapshot. This will be ready in about a quarter or two. Uh, so probably it'll be ready for the marketplace maybe December, January, plus or minus. Um, and this is the actual inbox here. Uh, here's the integrated calendar, uh, tasks, uh, I don't have any set up here, uh, personal notes, and um, yeah, we're, we really like this attachment viewer. So again, all of your attachments will be viewed in one place, which is super handy when you're like trying to find that one stinking file. And here's the notifications, which will kind of generate like a nice feed here for you. You can play with your settings and themes and... Um, yeah, this is what Zoho Mail will look like in the future. And if you're wondering about, um, hey, I have Zoho Mail in Zoho CRM, will this look like that too as well? And the answer is yes. So um, uh, to show you that really quickly, actually, I don't think this will work. Uh, okay. Yeah, this is a free account. This is not going to work. Okay, I'll show that if we have time afterwards. But there's an email module. Um, in Zoho CRM. Um, okay, we'll show that later. Uh, anyway, but yes, so this is the new version, and let's revert back to the current one. And uh, yeah, it's pretty straightforward. So now, since this is the super administrator account, we're gonna go to the control panel. All right, so here's our basic dashboard. We see how many folks we have, how many groups we have. Um, this is the administrator account, of course. 
We have our custom logo here that we selected that shows up on the top left. We have our dashboard, we have our domains that we can run. Here's our user details. We can play with our user access. Uh, here's the groups. Let's see, we have privileges here. Mail administration, email policy that we mentioned, uh, migration, uh, allowed IPs for IP restrictions, which is super cool. And those are pretty basic. So let's go to domains, start from the top of what we want to show you. All right. So let's say you're like, hey, Warren, this is great and all, but I don't have a domain. I'm still on AOL. I have bob at AOL.com. What should I do? All right, Bob, you should definitely get your own domain. So let's say bobisawesome.com. Let's check that domain. It is unavailable. Uh, no big surprise there. But let's say we like um, bobisgreat.net. You can continue with that, put in your settings here, and just buy this domain. And uh, we charge a flat um, 10 bucks, uh, pretty straightforward. If you want pre uh, private registration, you want to remain relatively anonymous, here's an extra surcharge, but it's pretty straightforward. Um, if you buy the domain from us, uh, then you don't have to worry about verification and all that jazz because it's done for you. Uh, but let's say you bought it somewhere else. How do you add that? No problem. So what we have to do is just go to add domain and uh, click it, just add it here. So we're going to add zillum.org, which we'll demonstrate today. And no, what we have to do next is get this verified. So uh, we have to go into the DNS manager of where we bought it from and then add the CNAME record, get it updated, blah, 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 blah. And... Here we'll do this live. So, uh, so if you're thinking like, hey, uh, I bought my domain from hopefully one of these places. Uh, once you select the correct relevant uh, DNS provider, uh, the correct instructions with screenshots and text will walk you through the exact process of how to verify that domain so you can use that for your email. So we're gonna demonstrate GoDaddy, but in case you use something else like WordPress or HostGator or anything else, uh, it's really straightforward. And we have full instructions with pictures. So uh, have no fear, this is all available for you to set up at your leisure. And if you need any help, uh, we're happy to help walk through this process since this is uh, fairly complicated and I'm going really fast. Okay, so now that we have our instructions pulled up, I'm going to go to GoDaddy here. Let me just separate the windows a little bit. While I'm tweaking this, I have uh, today's bad joke of the day is uh, two neutrons walk into a bar and the bartender goes for you, no charge. I'm glad the audience is muted because that's probably exactly what I deserve here. Uh, 19, okay. All right, so let's go step by step here. So no one gets lost. Okay, so first off, we want to. Uh, um, confirm that uh, we're in the right thing. We're gonna go to the domain section and bam, okay. And then we're gonna click the launch button for this particular uh, domain. If you have multiple ones, uh, it'll just kind of repeat in a different row in this kind of table-like thing. So let's click launch. All right, awesome. So for starters, make sure you have auto renew because you don't want to lose your domain. That would really be that would be really really bad, and uh, be bad for business. So make sure renew is on. So that's good. Uh, next, we're going to uh, go to the DNS file, and uh, we're not on the classic DNS manager, but just click add record. So. Uh, just click add record here and we're going to do uh, we're going to add Zillum here so we need to go to CNAME 
uh, host is, um, let's see, where is that? Where's the instructions for this? Oh, okay, here we go. Just scroll back to the top. We're going to copy and paste. Control C and Control V is awesome. All right. Uh, as, a, as a best practice, uh, set the TTL for half an hour. So data goes back and forth a little bit faster. So we're going to add this and just click Finish. And we're done. And next is just save change, save changes. Bam, done. So then go back to this screen. Let's get this out of here. Oh, this is funny, uh, especially for a cloud company. This, this is fear. Happy Halloween, everybody, if it's Halloween where you are. OK. Uh, click Verify on the bottom. Uh, once we're done, click Proceed. And um, it should be on zillum.org. Uh, tell you when it's registered. Status is on. And email hosting. Perfect. Uh, if it was not on, it would be unhighlighted. So you just want to make sure it's on. So just make sure it's uh, grayed in, not grayed out. And there we go. We just added a domain that we purchased externally. So that wasn't too hard, I hope. Uh, next, uh, we're going to actually um, work on email migration here. So what we'll do is I'm going to migrate uh, a Gmail account to something that's related to Zillum.org. So what I'll do is let's first create a user. Let's just go to mail accounts. Um, I'm sorry, let's go to user, sorry. User details, what am I doing? So user details, it shows us uh, who's in the organization, what they have, and let me just confirm that Warren is not here. Okay, good, good, good. Because we're gonna add Warren, okay. Perfect, Warren Wong, and we'll say it's Warren at Zillum.org. And we'll give him a password, and we'll click OK. Perfect. So let's go to record number 62, and that should be me. OK, perfect. All right. So here, now we have to, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to tweak the MX record, which is the mail exchange record. So once we have this set up, Let's go back to GoDaddy. Drag this bad boy back here. Uh, okay. Uh, we're going to add a record. We're going to use uh, MX. Uh, in case you want to know where these instructions are, and uh, we're going to go to user details. Oh, where is that? Dashboard, dashboard, dashboard. Uh, where do we have that? Okay, here we go. Under domains, we have the email hosting steps. And I'm just repeating what we're doing here. So we're adding a user. We just did that. Uh, we can configure groups later. It's not a big deal. We're going to modify the MX record in the DNS manager. And here is the actual values we're going to place. So um, here we're back in GoDaddy. And let me just start from the top here. We're in the DNS manager here, and we're going to add the record here. So add record, and it has that drop down. Remember, we did this earlier for CNAME for the actual domain. So now we're going to do the mail exchange uh, record right here. And it's going to ask us um, what the host is, and we're just going to say uh, at, and it's going to point to um, MX dot zohomail.com priority is going to be 10 we're going to optimize this for half an hour and we're going to add one more so that was added and uh, so that's one server and then here's the second one so in case the first one's clogged for any reason we want to have a backup so we have mx2 dot zohomail.com and priority level is 20 since so it's going to go uh, the the, the um, uh, it's going to first optimize for the lowest priority one. So this is just the backup. 
and we're going to click finish and it's done and don't forget to save changes um, this, this 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 save icon is a floppy drive you know kids these days don't know what that is that's really tragic but uh so is life okay all right so that should be all done and um so let's go to let's actually log into that bad boy and we'll just show you that I'm going to migrate a Gmail uh, inbox into this. So I want to show you the before and after and how we're doing on time. Okay, 15 minutes left. Okay, got to power through. Whoops. I'm already logged in for something else. Let's sign out. Um. Oh gosh. Okay, success. All right, so we have nothing in here. Perfect. Uh, let's just make sure that this is real. I want to show you guys that this is not a uh, hoax account. Zillum.org. Yo. All right, awesome. It's the real deal. Perfect. All right, so we're gonna float this off to the other screen and go back to control panel and we're gonna do a migration. All right, so we went to migration, add a migration name. The migration name itself is arbitrary, so we're gonna be like, um, do some ice cube uh, homage here. Um, you can select your migration protocol and you can select your server type. If you know what it is, uh, you just fill it out. Uh, since we're doing Gmail, to keep this simple, it's gonna auto-populate, and that's pretty straightforward. Um, let's add migration. Let's click this. Uh, we're gonna add the account. And if you have multiple uh, migrations to manage, you're gonna upload a CSV file and just provide all of the correct values. And this is what it's gonna look like right here on the right-hand side. So you want your spreadsheet to look something like that. Uh, that's if I was doing it for more than just one. Uh, you want to save some time, uh, just, just do that. And if any single character is incorrect, there's going to be hell to pay. But uh, for now, I'm just going to do one and keep it simple. Oh, what am I doing? Warren, uh, what is the email? Uh, warren.zoho at gmail.com uh, what was the password? Okay. Here's the destination address. Probably doesn't matter. Uh, let's just double check what's in the Gmail inbox. Because uh, I want to make sure you guys know that this is the real deal. All right, all right, real deal right here. All right, awesome, perfect. Okay, so we're gonna migrate all of this into this new email alias we created at zillum.org. Okay, we're gonna add this. Uh, what did I do wrong? Let's see. What's, oh yes, this is wrong, okay. Oh no, still wrong. Uh, let me just double check one, that's uh, gmail.com, source password, caps lock, is it on? No, it is not. Actually, I... okay. Uh, hmm. Let me try it one more time. Uh, 
Oh man, this worked earlier. Um, okay, I must have done something wrong. Okay, let's pretend that did work. Let me show you what it should have looked like. All right, let's shift gears here. Uh, let's go back to our last uh, migration. It would have looked something like this. It would have uh, shown us a status uh, that's in progress. It, was, it would show you how many messages are actually in the original inbox and how many were migrated. So you just want column A and column B to match. And that's as complicated as it gets. So I wish this worked, but um, I don't have time to troubleshoot it here. But uh, um, let's, just, let's just pretend it worked. OK, awesome. So no worries. Uh, let's go back to um, our actual inbox. And uh, let's show you those other settings we talked about. All right. OK, settings, let's, let's, let's uh, minimize that. OK, awesome. So here we have some couple basic settings, time format. Um, here we can send mail as. This is where we change our display name. So once you move your mouse cursor over the section, uh, click the paper clip, and you can change display name. So we could say it's um, Warren or it's maybe a department, maybe customer service or something. And um, OK. So let's just put this back to one. And my team is notifying me that the migration should work. Uh, there uh, IMAP was not enabled. And uh, let's try that again. OK. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna do this again. Okay. Uh, gmail.com. Thank you everyone for your patience. Uh, there was a lot of content in this webinar. Um, so thank you for bearing with us. Um, source password, destination address. Okay, it's gonna work. Ah. Uh, what am I doing wrong? Let's try this again. OK, no, it didn't fail. OK, all good. No worries. Uh, we'll figure it out in the autopsy. No biggie. OK, so here we just showed you how to update the display name, uh, play with your signatures, vacation replies, pretty straightforward. Um, here is pop and iMac configuration. Uh, pretty straightforward. Play with it here. Um, num, 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 num. If we enable uh, IMAP, we can select those folders that we want to be synced or not. Completely up to you. Okay, pretty straightforward. And what else do we want to show you here? Uh, here's our mail accounts. Um, num, 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 num. Oh, here's a best practice. Under Compose, we can send emails out immediately once you hit send, or we can delay the sending of an email. And I swear to God, this will save your life by just delaying emails one minute, five minutes. Uh, on my actual email account, it's set for 30, because um, I've changed my mind plenty of times. And what that looks like is we'll save it, uh, go to mail, it's going to reload. Gonna reload. Okay, perfect. Uh, so let's say I was emailing um, myself or any of those. We can send, and it's gonna go to the outbox, and it'll park there for 30 minutes uh, until it meets that time criteria. It's gonna send itself. If I want this to be sent immediately, I can just click send, or as I'm composing, um, I can um, hit the drop down here and send immediately as well. So you get uh, some nice options. Um, you can also edit uh, emails as well. So if we send this, it's gonna go back to the inbox, the, I'm sorry, the outbox, and we can still edit this. This is where the life-saving part comes into play. So uh, this will make you tactically set to dominate your email inbox. All right, awesome. OK, so let's jump back to our presentation, because we want to talk about other fun stuff, like pricing and other cool stuff. So we did our demo. And um, sorry, the migration uh, didn't quite work. Um, but I, I think you get the gist. And again, we'll send you the user documentation. 
this recording, this presentation, so you can review at your leisure. And um, perfect. So pricing. So we're really, really, really proud to give away uh, Zoho Mail for free for up to 10 users off the bat. And no one else does this. No one else provides ad-free enterprise level email. And the reason we do that is because email is foundational, it's important, and we really want to earn your business, and we hope that you'll upgrade and be happy with it. And as you grow, we'll grow. And we have many other apps besides just email. So uh, we want to uh, lead with our, um, with a, you know, start off strong and then uh, have you try out our other apps. And again, every app has a free edition. We really believe in the freemium business model. It's worked for us and um, it keeps the lights on. So uh, we really practice that. So out, out, after, after Zoho Mail, we hope you'll try our, our other apps from um, uh, document management, our office suite, project management, uh, our sales apps, um, email, uh, uh, email campaigns for marketing, HR software, accounting software, uh, there's a little of everything. And you, there's, you can really run your whole business off this. So uh, Zoho definitely does. So Zoho runs on Zoho. And we have uh, you know, single person businesses to large enterprise companies like Facebook that use our app. So uh, that's totally awesome. And um, uh, we mentioned that we give you 10 free uh, users for Zoho Mail. And once you refer some other folks, you can get 15 for both you and the referee, I guess, in this case. And uh, in that case, uh, 10 plus 15 is still 25. So uh, that's how awesome it is. And no one else does this, particularly a ad-free enterprise-level uh, email solution. So we're really proud of that. And again, uh, we're three minutes shy of 10 o'clock. And uh, again, we're going to send this recording out to you guys. Uh, I'll send it via Zoho Docs with a public link. And this will be uploaded on YouTube shortly as well. So it can be streamed instead of completely downloaded. And uh, we'll send you the user guide and uh, the presentation itself. And this webinar will be repeated in the future. And uh, I promise you the time slots will be so much better next time. And it will definitely accommodate uh, Asia, Europe, and everywhere else as well. And other than that, please jot down our support email, and we're really, really happy to um, be of service and uh, uh, take care of that. So, um, and uh, so again, thank you so much, everybody. My name is Warren. If you have to take off, uh, thank you so much for joining us and investing one hour of your time to explore Zoho and also learn more about it if you're already using it. And we'll stay, we'll stay on for a little bit longer to answer any questions. So please let us know. And um, yeah, we really appreciate it. And again, uh, a shout out to all the Giants fans out there. And um, yeah, it's all fun and games. And uh, your bad joke number two as your parting shot is, uh, so we did the, uh, the neutrons that walk into a bar. So after neutron walks in, after the neutrons walk into a bar, uh, helium walks into a bar. And then the bartender goes, hey, we don't serve your kind here. And helium, like all other noble gases, didn't react. And with that, I'm going to keep my day job and be awesome. All right. Uh, let's see. I've got some questions pouring in. Uh, let me just uh, double check something. We're trying to fix that mig migration problem still. Oh, OK. So for those of you who are still here, um, the migration, we figured out what was wrong. Uh, um, uh, so now we have made it in progress. So we can abort that if we wanted to. And we'll see that it's running. We could see click more info. We'll see that it'll slowly migrate that inbox over. And if we log into that inbox, let's see, where is that? Where is that email account? It will be turned on momentarily. Oh, there we go. There we go. 386, 390, 392. It's working. Uh, you, you see the numbers go up, but the messages aren't populating. Uh, it will populate. 
I promise you that. And uh, on our control panel side, we can see what's happening. Refreshing. Oh, okay. Uh, once it's done, this value will change. But uh, it is the migration is in progress. Okay. Yay, it's working. Okay, awesome. So this will be fairly fast. Uh, for example, a 5 GB inbox will be completely migrated in about half an hour. So that's kind of, uh, just, just give it some time. And uh, patience is always a virtue. Okay. And uh, again, uh, this will be recorded. So if you need to share this with other folks that didn't want to be up at 9 o'clock PM Pacific time, uh, absolutely, we'll make that available. And we'll do this again, and we'll showcase new and better cool features uh, each month. And again, my name is Warren. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining us. And if you want to jot down our email, we'd be happy to be in touch and help you with other stuff. Um, if you're interested in other apps besides just Zoho Mail, uh, you, let me leave you my email. Um, my email is up here, warren at zohocorp.com. If you guys ever need a DJ, let me know. I'll fly off my turntables. It'll be awesome. Uh, and let's see what other questions are coming in. Looks like most of them have been answered. OK. Uh, I think I have some time to show you guys Zoho CRM. I think that's pretty popular. Uh, let me see if I can log in. Nope, 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 nope. Okay. I know a lot of customers out there use CRM, so uh, this is very important because now we're just not talking about emails, we're talking about money and emails so very key all right so email integration in case you don't know what this is and you have crm and you've always wanted to learn how to set up email uh, i'm going to show you where to find that help guide that's completely or mostly um, all inclusive so just go to the crm resources page we got here through the help link right here on manuals it sends you here or you can just go to the zoho crm website go to crm resources and under videos, under demo videos, we have a five minute video on email integration in its entirety. So uh, check that out. And uh, once you have that set up, here's the end product. So we have the emails module completely embedded in Zoho CRM. Right there, bam. So you don't have to change screens, you don't have to tab to a different thing. It's right here in CRM. You can stay here, conduct business, and just go back and forth. If you want to look at your uh, potential deals, no problem. You want to check back to your emails, no problem. You want to look at your dashboards, no problem. You want to go back to emails, no problem. So pretty awesome. And if you haven't heard of Mail Magnets, it's an awesome feature here, which basically filters your inbox and only shows you customer emails from your leads, contacts, and accounts. And that way you can respond to important business emails right away. And this is also available on mobile and tablet as well. So uh, most emails nowadays are actually uh, read on uh, portable devices. And uh, this way you can knock out emails super fast. So if you're on your morning commute, you can read it, reply, and be on your way. Super, super cool. All right, so that's Soho CRM. And we also have webinars for Zoho CRM in case you uh, are just learning. So if we go back to that CRM resource page, uh, we have webinars. Um, I teach them occasionally as well. Uh, we have CRM basics and then CRM setup and customization, which is really tailored for administrators and uh, that. Uh, I'll be teaching the uh, release. Uh, we just did a big release for CRM with updates. And we'll be talking about that. Uh, I'm doing the one for Zoho Survey, if you guys want to check that out. And uh, my compatriots will be talking about the other cool updates and uh, modules. And um, 
What else is awesome and cool and new that you guys would like? Oh, okay. We got to talk about this. We are offering a app bundle that no one has ever done in the cloud world ever. So we're offering CRM, live chat, uh, project management, customer support, Zoho reports, uh, Zoho surveys, um, uh, email marketing, uh, social media management, all those different independent apps as a bundle for 50 bucks a month. No one has ever done that. And it's all integrated together. And this is called Zoho CRM Plus. It's not just CRM, but everything else that you would need to make that incredibly powerful so you can deliver awesomeness to your customers. So uh, if you want to check that out, um, that's uh, in addition to your free Zoho Mail. So uh, not too shabby at all. All right, let's check it out. Let's go back to questions. All right. Let's see. Um, do, 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 do. Okay, I sort of brought a sign to a version. Sorry, there's a lot of questions here. Um, Can we create another name to our enter domain journal? Okay, we have a question from Ramon. If Zoho gets updated, would my new modules get updated as well? Uh, so the answer is yes. Uh, the benefit of having something deployed online uh, via the cloud is you always have the freshest version of everything. Uh, that includes security, um, patches to bugs, all kinds of things. So we can just build that right into uh, the browser-loaded uh, application itself. So you don't have to worry about downloading software, uh, adding patches, adding updates. Uh, you don't have any of that experience. So that's the benefit of how, having uh, something online. Uh, compared to Adobe updates, sweet Jesus. That happens uh, every single time you turn on the computer. So uh, online deployment is awesome. Uh, it looks like, Ramon, you have a question about codes? I'm not sure what codes, uh, what, what codes you're, you're mentioning. Are you talking about two-factor authentication? Okay, uh, Ramon, I think that question might require a little bit more unpacking. So let me give you back our support email and we can we can uh, take that up with you uh, individually. So support at zohomail.com if you want to email us and we'd be happy to clarify. And let's take a couple last questions here. Uh, hi, Michelle. What is the difference between Zoho Mail and Google Apps Mail? Okay, well, Google's Apps for Business is a great partner of ours. Uh, we integrate with them on a number of products, and we really appreciate that partnership. We're actually the number one commercial vendor on the Google Apps Marketplace. So uh, even though we actively compete on virtually everything, uh, we really respect Google as a company, and we've really learned from them. And uh, uh, we offer basically integration for both Soho Mail and uh, Google Apps on many apps including uh, Zoho Mail and a number of other items as well. So it's more of a preference thing. Do you like Zoho Mail? Do you like Google? Uh, do you like Gmail? It, you can use both uh, or just stick to one. So it's up to you. It's a, it's a personal preference thing. Again, of course, we recommend Zoho Mail, of course, but uh, it's, it's really your personal preference. Okay, any other last questions? Uh, if not, please jot down our email and we'll be happy to chat with you later. And again, uh, we will definitely email you all these resources for you to review on your own. 
and uh, we happily invite you for the next webinar. Uh, we'll send you an email later. And if you have new hires, you're onboarding other folks, uh, send them to me. I'll babysit them for an hour and give them back to you as email gods. So it'll be fantastic.